it's a pleasure for me to be here. I appreciate the introduction and I'm delighted to be able to talk about a topic very near and dear to my heart, sustainability. Uh, in particular, as the title shows, I'm going to talk about sustainability, renewable energy in particular, and within that, the prominence of advanced materials, the importance that they play. Uh, I am Mark Rosen, as the introduction mentioned. I'm past president of the Engineering Institute of Canada, editor-in-chief of a journal, Sustainability, so this topic is something uh, I'm very close to. The motivation for my talk is, is threefold, basically. Uh, and I've shown them the, the three motivation points on the backdrop of the skyline of the city of Toronto, taken from Toronto Island out in Lake Ontario, looking back to the city. Uh, sustainability, the first point, I believe sustainability is something very important for society to move towards uh, for the good of the people that live now as well as future generations. Achieving sustainability requires the second point, sustainable energy use. If we use energy sustainable, sustainably, we solve a lot of the problems associated with achieving sustainability. A lot of the ills that we face, be it resource shortages or environmental damage, become more tractable. As well, the third point of the motivation is the importance of advanced materials. Materials play a key role in many energy technologies, and therefore advanced materials can help support sustainable energy use and other aspects of sustainability. So let me talk about, first of all, sustainability in general. What is it? Uh, it's an esoteric term to many. It can mean many different things to many different people, making it very hard to take action towards achieving sustainability. Well, one way of looking at it that I kind of like is a, a three-way Venn diagram where sustainability is viewed as having social dimensions. Let's see if I can do this. Social dimensions, economic dimensions, and environmental dimensions. And the true achievement of sustainability is viewed as the three-way intersection where we satisfy environmental concerns, and protect the environment, both in terms of resource extraction and waste deposit. Where we meet economic sustainability needs, things have to be affordable to people. Solutions and options that aren't affordable will not gain much traction, will not help worldwide sustainability efforts. And social sustainability, people have to be able to achieve the dreams, the goals that they have. Societies have to develop, cultures have to develop as they wish. The idea here is uh, also if you achieve any one of these, you're not necessarily sustainable. Even achieving two of them gets you partway, but doesn't completely get you towards the true intersection. Okay, that's one viewpoint. Sustainability is also multidisciplinary. Um, as editor of the journal, editor-in-chief of the journal Sustainability, the logo for which is shown here, I see papers coming in from all sorts of fields, science and engineering for sure, a lot of focus on the environment, but economists and business people submit papers, ethicists, lawyers submit papers, geographers, uh, on and on the list goes, everybody's approaching sustainability, all the fields seem to have something to do with it and they're approaching it in their own ways. Uh, this journal has been around for more than a decade, it's an international open access journal that I think it's done incredibly well. The number of submissions has grown every year. Impact factors, quite respectable. Another indication of the importance of sustainability overall is uh, given by the vision statement for the Engineering Institute of Canada. I've been president of that organization. It's been around since 1887, so it's almost as old as Canada, which was confederated in 1867. Um, it's a broad umbrella institute that brings together all of the engineering learned societies 
most of them in Canada. So the mechanical engineers, the chemical engineers, the civil engineers, um, electrical engineers, on and on and on. And their presidents are members of the board of the Engineering Institute of Canada. And the vision statement that was recently redeveloped was simply uh, engineering for a prosperous, safe and sustainable Canada. So I note that the three adjectives in there included sustainable. Here we're social, environmental, and economic dimensions come into play. The multidisciplinarity I talked about and the importance is where I was for the Engineering Institute of Canada. And there's the vision statement I was referring to, including sustainable, my emphasis, a uh, sustainable Canada, both within Canada and exporting services abroad. Okay, I'll carry on. Let's focus now on energy sustainability. A uh, question comes up, and hence my question mark here, what is energy sustainability? I looked at definitions in the dictionary, Google, I couldn't find anything. Sustainability or sustainable development is often defined as development that allows present generations to meet their own needs while not hindering future generations from meeting their needs. I tried to translate that into uh, energy terms, so I came up with my own definition, which was the provision of energy services in a sustainable manner. I thought that was kind of encapsulating of everything. It's energy services, not the energy that people are after, rather the things that energy can do for them. Providing those services, whatever the energy source, is what people are after. Doing it sustainably is what sustainability implies. But a linguist pointed out that this is a bit of a circular definition using sustainable to define sustainability. So I had to explain where by sustainable manner, I mean provision of energy services at least sufficient for necessities in an affordable manner, in an environmentally benign manner, and in a socially acceptable manner, a manner that's acceptable to communities. Uh, for example, try putting nuclear power into a jurisdiction where they're very heavily anti-nuclear, probably not acceptable, probably not a long-term option. Same with uh, wind turbines, putting them in a place where they're viewed as so ugly and abhorrent that people don't want them. Again, you've got to find the acceptable solutions to truly have a sustainable manner of providing energy services. Okay, I'll carry on. The requirements for energy, energy sustainability, uh, from a technical perspective first, I've listed as follows. First, using sustainable energy sources. If we insist on using non-sustainable energy sources, sources that are finite in nature, well, sooner or later, we can run out. More likely, they become harder and harder to extract as they're deeper and deeper in the ground or more and more diffuse in nature. And eventually, we find they're just not tractable, not practical to to exploit anymore. Whereas other sources are tied to renewable uh, supplies that can last us millions of years. Uh, for example, biomass when handled properly, these are oil palms in Malaysia, when handled properly, the growth rate of new matter can balance with the extraction rate. There's a rough net zero carbon emission in essence, you're using sunlight and cycling it through a biomass source. That can be sustainable. A nuclear energy, many argue, is sustainable. Present reactor technology using uh, uranium has maybe reserves that will last 100, 150 years based on our known understanding of reserves of uranium. However, breeder technology, new technology that exploits the spent fuel of which we have only extracted less than 1% of the energy potential, can reprocess that fuel, and then we'd have enough to last 1,000, 1,500 years, which becomes pretty sustainable. Uh, at least 1,000 years is quite a long time. Uh, then you get the pure renewables like solar, wind, of course, that as long as the sun is shining, will be available to us as well, tidal and, and wave energy, things like that. Fossil fuels, no. Fossil fuels, of course, have that finite limitation, cause untold environmental problems that we're continually dealing with but wish to avoid.
especially climate change. The second requirement for sustainability is the use of appropriate energy carriers and um, electricity is a very common one, but we need others. We often need a chemical carrier and hydrogen, this is a hydrogen vehicle shown on the right, is a carrier that can do that. Hydrogen is an interesting hydrocarbon. It's a carbon-free hydrocarbon. It's one extreme as opposed to pure carbon and then mixed hydrocarbons in the middle, like octane or, or gasoline or coal or natural gas would be. Uh, well, hydrogen can be the complement to electricity, both of which allow us to extract energy from many renewable energy sources that we couldn't use as they exist. Where something like oil we can use with mild processing as it exists in another form of petrochemical whereas solar energy has to be converted either to electricity or to usable heat or to a chemical like hydrogen. The third requirement for sustainability, increased efficiency. That doesn't mean you become sustainable, but it stretches out reserves much longer, gives you time to bring new sustainable sources online. And by efficiency, I don't just mean device efficiency, like the efficiency of a pump, but rather system efficiency too, like the efficiency of a power plant that includes a pump and many other devices. Efficient energy management, where you balance supplies and demands appropriately, build in energy storage appropriately to manage energy. Matching supply and end use, both demand and, and uh, supply, as well matching energy quality, a high temperature heat, like that we can get from burning natural gas in a home furnace is overkill in providing space heat to a house at 20, 25 degrees centigrade. Uh, we could get away with low temperature solar energy or waste heat from the back end of a high temperature thermal plant to provide that 25 or 30 degrees that you might need for space heating. So better matching of supply and end use also contributes to efficiency. Better integration of different sources. So for instance, you can cascade, as I just alluded, the fuel goes into a high temperature plant, uses a high temperature energy, rejects moderate temperature heat that might be used in a low temperature chemical plant like a plastic smelting plant. And the waste heat from that may be suitable to go into a district heating grid to provide heat for heating buildings, integrate the wastes and supplies more efficiently instead of everybody using their own resource. And efficiency also means the design of systems for using energy more efficiently, uh, designing cities so that there are good transport corridors for mass transport between where people live, where they work, the designing so that you keep large plots of land in a natural form, both for the aesthetics and people's enjoyment, as well as many na nature forms, plants and animals survive better rather than broad sprawling cities. Okay, uh, also there are advanced tools we can use like exergy analysis. I don't have time in this talk to go on about it. It's a measure, I'll just briefly mention, it's a measure of energy quality. It's not conserved. It helps us come up with more meaningful efficiencies Understanding of loss is an understanding of improvement potential in energy, any energy technology. So it's an advanced tool to, uh, stemming from thermodynamics. Uh, you could even use it to analyze a planet as well as any device you could put in here, like a pump or a power plant. Fourth energy sustainability requirement is reduction in environmental impact. Uh, be that addressing climate change by stopping the increase in the average temperature. This is a thermogram of the Earth, and the average temperatures increased about a degree since uh, about 70 years ago. Most of that in the last 30, 40 years. Uh, using tools like life cycle assessment to get better understanding of the broad under broad impact on the environment of technologies from cradle when they're born and created to grave when they're ultimately disposed of. CCS is carbon capture and sequestration, uh, the dream of the fossil fuel industry that we get that working online commercially at acceptable prices. 
so that we capture the main greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, before they leave the plant, convert them to something storable, capture them and store them, hopefully forever. And the last aspect of sustainable energy in terms of requirements are the other facets of sustainability that aren't technical in nature. And there are many of them. For instance, I list many here. Um, educating people about sustainability so that they understand. If people understand, they'll often opt for sustainable options as opposed to maybe a knee-jerk reaction against it because they don't understand what's being proposed. Uh, enhancing lifestyles and living standards, not doing things that hinder them because that will not be socially acceptable to people typically. Making sure that we don't sacrifice health, that we allow cultures to develop appropriately. We deal with urbanization where more than 75% of per populations live in cities and that number is growing. We, we help address people's attitudes. We address ethical and legal concerns. We set up policies where necessary to support sustainability. Uh, all sorts of things to be done to support sustainability on the non-technical side. Okay, what I'd like to do now is switch to the third part of my talk, the final part, in which I want to talk about advanced materials and their importance, some examples of their importance in achieving energy sustainability in particular and overall sustainability within that. Uh, the first area I'll go to is solar energy. I've mentioned it already as one of the key requirements for uh, energy sustainability, having renewable energy sources. Solar energy is one. Uh, solar energy, the sun com energy coming from the sun, as well as reflecting and scattering through the sky, off clouds, etc., towards the ground. This is a fisheye lens shooting straight up uh, an all-sky photograph. Solar thermal technologies capture the solar energy, convert it to heat. And there are efforts going on to use advanced materials to create better heat exchangers like nano additives, nanomaterial additives to the heat transport fluid in a solar thermal collector can enhance the heat transfer by 50%, 100% in some examples, thereby allowing much better conversion of the energy from the sun uh, as it's converted to thermal energy, better capture of that and utilization of it. In addition, solar photovoltaics are becoming increasingly used because their prices are coming down, their efficiencies are going up, and they're competitive in some jurisdictions now with conventional technologies. And others, not so, but they're moving in that direction. And they're are advanced materials that go into new designs of photovoltaics. People are looking at designing, for instance, um, clear photovoltaics that you can see through that could be put over window panes, can be put over other places where you don't want to obscure the viewer, or put up something that some consider ugly and make the photovoltaics um, more applicable to a wider range of, of uses. In addition, improving the efficiency of photovoltaics is continually a challenge of looking for better uh, material semiconductors that can allow these devices to go beyond the 20 percent efficiency that they roughly achieve now a second example of the importance of advanced materials is hydrogen production hydrogen is used uh, is viewed quite often as a complement to electricity in a non-fossil fuel based energy economy uh, we've done a lot of work on hydrogen production at my university on the production of hydrogen. This is a route to hydrogen from fossil fuels or from renewable energy forms. We've looked at nuclear energy being used to produce heat from which we produce hydrogen in a special chemical cycle. But there are many other routes. Uh, solar photovoltaics is one. So the use of advanced materials in solar photovoltaics helps in the production of hydrogen. Also, the use of nuclear technologies for using hydrogen requires advanced materials for better nuclear cores that are more resistant to the damage of radiation and last longer. On the so, uh, nuclear solar thermal side, the process we're looking at, I'll show on the next slide, is a thermochemical water decomposition process where we separate water or decompose it to its constituent parts, hydrogen and oxygen, in separate steps. It's a chemical loop and we add heat 
at two temperatures, about 400 degrees and 500 degrees, and a little bit of electricity. And with that heat that can come from a nuclear reactor, or even from a high temperature solar thermal collector, we run a cycle containing copper chlorine materials that ultimately allows in one step oxygen to come off and the other step hydrogen to come off, all derived from the water that was input in a third step. That becomes our product. The oxygen is a byproduct. It's clean oxygen that can be used in chemical uses, medical uses as well. Well, these are very caustic materials. Making this work, this is hypothetical. We've got experiments set up, but making it work in the real world requires better advanced materials that can withstand the nature of the chemicals and the temperatures and pressures involved. A third example of advanced materials and their importance is in energy storage. For example, thermochemical energy storage. Uh, we can store heat in thermal energy storage in storages that rise in temperatures you add heat or that change phase like a, like a plastic melts and store it that way. We can also use chemical, thermochemical storage where heat in the charging phase, heat is added to a, a chemical pair that splits them. We then separate them and store each pair as long as we want to wait. When we need the heat, we recombine them and the heat is released. And if that heat is provided at a temperature that matches what we can provide and is released at a temperature that matches what we need, this can be a very efficient and compact way of storing thermal energy. An order of magnitude, less volume is required compared to conventional thermal storages. Problem is finding a nice chemical pair. There are many proposed, many being looked at, that can work, that's economic, that can last many storage cycles and still perform. Advanced materials are being looked at to find just the right pair to make this technology become really the, the thermal storage method. Uh, the last example I want to look at of advanced materials and their importance is buildings and communities. Here's a building. Uh, I'm a director of Oshawa Power, a local electrical distribution company, and we are dealing in renewable technologies. Here are solar houses that we've supported where there's solar photovoltaics, a battery storage system. This is hooked up to the grid. It can supply power to the electrical grid or import electrical power from the grid as needed. This can be computer controlled to operate on a high security basis to make sure that you have available power for a backup of 10 days in case you're worried about outages. Like we had one here, the, a major ice storm about 10 years ago that took down power lines for some homes because of the damage done to the connection for 10 days. Or you can set this up to operate on the economically best basis or on the environmentally best basis. Uh, advanced materials go into the solar PV. As well, there's thermal storage potential. Some of that is embedded right in the walls of some advanced houses to allow uh, energy to be stored in daytime, recovered at nighttime when their nights might be cooler. So advanced materials can go into advanced buildings. Important because buildings constitute about 30 to 40% of the energy use in most countries in the world. Okay, this brings me towards the end. I'll close my talk now by simply a few concluding remarks. I believe sustainability is essential. I firmly feel that energy sustainability is a critical quest. Achieving energy sustainability will bring us well over halfway to sustainability when you look at the issues that need to be resolved to achieve sustainability. And advanced materials are a key part of energy sustainability. There are other key parts, but advanced materials are one. And I'll close by reminding people of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for the 2015 to 2030 timeframe. These were approved unanimously by the member states of the United Nations. And the work I talked about here, there are 17 goals. I'll let you look at these on your own, but one of them is renewable energy and achieving energy sustainability directly falls within that goal for the United Nations. Um, other areas fit as well, like sustainable cities and communities. I just talked about a building example and a community of buildings. Uh, climate action to fight climate change, for instance, is also supported by the present work. And with that, I come to the end of my talk. I thank you for listening. I'm happy to address any questions there might be.